Okay, hi guys. I've made sure I've washed my hands, okay? So they were nicely washed with soap. Remember, get right in there and make sure you're getting on your nails away, right, um, getting in between your nails as well. Also, apron ready so that I'm not getting anything dirty. I've got out all the equipment that I could possibly need, all right? And now I'm just gonna show you how to make our turnip squash backwards cooking meal okay so if you don't like turnip and you don't like butternut squash you can replace these items with other vegetables okay so you've got things like potatoes as an obvious choice okay but equally you could have leeks you could have mushrooms you could have sweet corn you've got to go with your own one but this recipe is specifically from a native american called sean sherman so in order to do cutting of vegetables okay we want to get rid of our ends so we cut by two methods either an arch which is like this and your knife goes in between in the middle and you go down or the claw which is where you're going like that making sure your thumb's away and then you can slice now the idea is here if you were to make a scent um a slip you would be hitting your nail first which means that in reality you shouldn't have any accidents but nice and careful with all of this okay all right so I've snipped off one end again using my claw I'm snipping off the other. Now, they want nice, big, fat chunks. And again, here I'm using the arch, okay? So once I've got the arch, I've got it nice and laid down, like so. I can cut in between, and then I can use my claw ooh, method. Okay, so this is the turnip that I'm cutting up at the moment. All right, once we've done it, we can put it in the middle. Now, luckily, because this is all vegetarian, we haven't got to worry about using a different chopping board for the next vegetable, okay? However, if you were using meat, you'd use a completely separate chopping board. Now, butternut squash is quite hard and they want you to cook it with the skin on, okay? So, I've already got half of one. Now, this is where it gets quite hard, but again, we're gonna use the claw and I'm gonna go down on the side here okay and then i will have to push a little bit now this is where you will possibly need an adult to help you unless you've got some really strong arms okay all right now i've got seeds in here so i'm going to get my spoon that i've already got out and i'm going to just scoop out the seeds in this case all right we don't want to eat the seeds on our butter not squash okay so if i can just show you on that one here okay get your spoon in and basically scoop out all of the seeds okay this is the bit that we do not want like a pumpkin, right? yeah very similar to a pumpkin in fact if you don't like butternut squash a pumpkin is a good one although pumpkins don't tend to be around this time of year now <laughs> i'm just about getting and scooping out all of these i seem to be making more of a mess than i'm making of anything else so please be very careful of your kitchen and that you don't offend the person who's generally in charge of your kitchen because we don't want to upset them all right now i'm going to clear mine off to the side here because that has really made a mess of mine okay so on my chopping board i'm just going to put this in our box that we use for our compost compost thank you toby toby's filming by the way i'm not sure what the compost is called there lost it right Anyway, these seeds here, we'll move out of the way and I'll, I'll worry about them at a later date, okay? So, now that we've got our squash ready, okay, I can now cut it. So again, remember we're using the claw to go through, all right? And again, the reason being that we do this, um, sorry, this isn't a claw, this is the arch. And the idea is that as we do this, if we were to slip, it would slip between the vegetable and our hands. Again, reducing the risk. I'm getting it now i am going to use the claw here for going on the sideway motions and just doing that i need to be a little bit careful okay so i'm trying to probably be too quick in my planning with this so i should really use my claw and just cut one at a time there you go much better isn't it i'm not having any vegetables flying so please be sensible where you can all right, so when you're cutting, you should be using the claw or the arch method and use the one that seems more practical to you at the time. So again, this one, we're gonna go down through the middle, okay, like so. Then I'm using what we call the claw to go here. Now they want nice, big, chunky bits to go in. 
and there you go now i am going to put this bit away just because i'm not so au fait with the top there okay and then we are chopping this into bits and putting it in okay so they want nice big chunky bits all right so we get a nice substantial good meal at the end of this okay so remember you can replace these with different vegetables if you choose now hopefully either you have helped or somebody in your family has got your fire going okay i think it might have gone out so hopefully you've got your family doing that okay okay but you need to have it going this is best cooked more on the embers okay than it is the flames which is why you should get the fire started before you do the making, which gives it a bit of a time to cool down. So again, using my arch technique, then the claw to get these bits cut like so. And I'm gonna cut around that top piece and leave that out and put that in very quickly. Well, uh, that's all the main vegetables, okay? So next on the recipe, it asks for this to be mixed in with the salt and the sage and the sunflower oil. So I'm gonna do the sunflower first. Now, again, if you haven't got sunflower oil, you can use olive oil, it's entirely up to you, but it asks for two tablespoons, so that's your big spoons, okay? The ones that you'd probably eat your puddings with, okay? So it's asking for one, and then it's asking for two, okay? So if you don't have sunflower oil, you can use vegetable oil, or you can use olive oil, it's absolutely fine, okay? You use what you've got at home. Now, it did say fresh sage. I couldn't find any sage, fresh sage, so I am using dried sage, okay? But again, if you don't like sage, you can use parsley, or you can use rosemary, it's entirely up to you, okay? It's your flavoring that you're putting in. And again, it asks for two tablespoons. So I'm gonna pour a bit in, that's one. And that is two. All right, so that's my two tablespoons of sage. And then it said two teaspoons. So teaspoons is the smallest spoon you've got probably in the house, used to make your tea and coffee. All right, and coarse salt. So it's one, and then it was two tablespoons of that. Teaspoons. Teaspoons, sorry. Thank you, Toby, <laughs> for correcting me. Now that, in theory, is your mixture all made. The only things you've got left to add to it is your honey and your sesame seeds, okay? Some, now, sunflower. I, sunflower seeds, sorry, but you could have sesame seeds or mm. pine nuts, it's entirely up to you. Yeah. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna use my spoon and I'm gonna stir this all in, okay? So it's nice and even. Yeah, so it's as even as we can get, block. okay? Now, what we need to do is put this into our tin foil. So, that's roughly all mixed in, okay? As good as I'm gonna get. And what we're gonna do here is I've got two tin foil sheets, okay? And we're gonna put half the mixture in here and then we're gonna put the other half in another couple of sheets as well, okay? So there's quite a lot here. If you wanted as well, guys, you could add onions into this, okay? It's entirely up to you. But what I'm doing now is it's really important that you make sure you wrap it in quite well, okay? So again, we're wrapping it up to seal. And we're double doing it just to make sure. Okay, so that's my one wrap there. And then the next wrap is like so. Do we need two, two oh, pieces? Oh, I did need to do two pieces, sorry, thank you. Mm. My wonderful assistant, Tobias, helping me today. Yeah. Okay, so sorry, get that in the middle then. So again, pull the other half in. So again, we're wrapping up as tight as I can. And I do like to sort of wrap it into a parcel, so it's warmer. 
and then it is ready to go into the fire which i will show a picture of this in a minute in the fire however not to be a delia smith person or anything but i have one that i've already done now this one i put in my oven just so we had something ready going on all right and once we've done this you have to add so remember this is hot so do be careful when you take it out all right now this one here i don't know if you can see that okay i did add in my sunflower seeds at the very beginning okay but that was my choice you don't have to do that at all now we've got to add two tablespoons of honey into this one okay and then we cook it for the last bit at the end so we're just going to sprinkle that and drizzle it all over so that's one And that's two okay and then again we put this in for about 10 minutes into your fire and then you'll have a lovely meal prepared for your lunch enjoy